SpaceX's third Starship mega rocket is standing tall on the launch pad and Elon Musk just revealed its launch timeline. Can the third time actually be the charm? We are getting closer to that answer. SpaceX recently stacked the enormous vehicle on the orbital launch mount at its Starbase site in South Texas, placing the Ship 28 upper stage prototype atop its Booster 10 first stage partner. Starship team is preparing for a full launch rehearsal ahead of Flight 3, SpaceX wrote in a post on X February 13th that shared photos of the milestone. In another post, the company published a short video of the stacking, which was performed by the chopstick arms of Starbase's launch tower. Everything appears to be set for Starship's crucial final test before its anticipated flight. SpaceX wasted no time, awakening Ship 28 and Booster 10 the very next day, around 1400 hours 52 CST on February 14th, following the completion of fuel loading and venting procedures. This test represents a significant milestone as it marks the first occasion of conducting a comprehensive assessment with all nine horizontal liquid methane tanks. During the loading process, observers noted the gradual appearance of frost lines on the second stage. However, these frost lines remained static over the subsequent 10 minutes, indicating a potential issue. Consequently, the wet dress rehearsal test for S28 and B10 remains outstanding, with the reasons for the delay yet to be disclosed. Despite the setback with the wet dress rehearsal test, SpaceX promptly pivoted to conduct two alternative tests. At about 50 minutes later from the initial test, they initiated a test utilizing the water deluge system, operating it for less than a minute with two activations. This process mirrored previous tests with the forceful expulsion of water estimated at around 450,000 gallons, exceeding the height of the orbital launch mount. The successful outcome of this test bodes well, underscoring the system's critical role in safeguarding the launch pad and surrounding infrastructure, as evidenced during the IFT-2 flight last November. Following the water deluge system test, SpaceX proceeded with a test involving the fire suppression system beneath the booster. This marked the system's fourth activation to date and its first operation beneath the base of Booster 10. Together with the water deluge system, the fire suppression system plays a crucial role in ensuring the safe execution of the launch process. With these two tests concluded, Attention now turns back to the pending wet dress rehearsal, which is anticipated to undergo another iteration imminently. The revised road closure schedule for February 15th suggests a definitive closure, indicating progress towards conducting the test. Additionally, another closure is scheduled for February 20th, with both testing days slated from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. CST. In accordance with planned timeframes, Booster 10 and Ship 28 are scheduled for a partial wet dress rehearsal, followed by a subsequent full wet dress rehearsal approximately a day later. The partial rehearsal involves SpaceX loading the booster and ship to about half capacity or less, assessing the functionality of the new systems and modifications made to the orbital launch pad. A wet dress rehearsal is a procedure employed by SpaceX and other launch companies to assess a rocket and its countdown process. In a wet dress rehearsal, the rocket, such as SpaceX's Starship, is completely filled with propellants, specifically liquid oxygen and liquid methane. Throughout this process, the entire launch countdown is executed up to the point of engine ignition. Nevertheless, the engines remain unignited and following the completion of the countdown and other testing, the propellants are then removed from the vehicle in a process known as detanking. Only after passing all these tests will Starship be considered ready. At that point, when everything is all set and done, what you and I are wondering has to be when Ship 28 and Booster 10 will take off, right? Disappointingly, Elon Musk, the father of Starship, has an answer for this. The third test flight of SpaceX's giant Starship rocket could be just around the corner, according to Musk. Our next one launches in about three weeks, but I recommend waiting for a few more test flights before hopping on board, Musk said on Monday in a post on X. The billionaire entrepreneur was replying to a post from rapper Ye, formerly known as Kanye West, who had asked Musk, where my rocket ship? The two moguls have known each other for more than a decade and have interacted frequently on X over the years. In any case, Starship IFT-3 would be NET March 4th-ish, 
by this estimate. Add in a bit of Elon time and the regular round of last minute things, we're probably looking at a mid-March or so launch. To consider, this schedule has been pushed back from the previous SpaceX announcement. We can clearly recognize that an FAA launch license is still another significant hurdle standing between SpaceX and Starship's orbital launch debut. On November 18th of 2023, its second flight had a similar fate as communication was lost about eight minutes following liftoff declaring the vehicle had failed and the booster exploded after the ship was put on a course toward space. The FAA said that the mishap investigation for OFT2 is still open, pending more information from SpaceX. The license modification requires all needed information to be submitted and reviewed, and the investigation needs to be closed before Starship returns to flight. Starship is the biggest and most powerful rocket ever built. It stands about 400 feet or 122 meters tall when fully stacked, but future versions will be even larger, according to Musk. Due to Starship's unprecedented size, it elevates the risk it could pose to local residents. Starship will be at least 10 to 15 meters or 33 to 49 feet longer by version 3. It's likely that the license is also contingent upon results from ground tests and will be one of the last gates to be lifted. Anyway, SpaceX and the FAA are working together to resolve the investigation. We believe that this challenge will be overcome faster than before. Next, here is the latest update on the Polaris Dawn spacewalk mission. Sadly, we'll have to wait a few more months to see the first ever private spacewalk instead of April, as previously scheduled. Launch of the private Polaris Dawn mission, which aims to notch that milestone as well as test SpaceX's Starlink internet service in space and conduct a variety of science experiments, has been delayed from April to no earlier than this summer, its organizers announced on Thursday, February 8th. The additional time continues to provide necessary developmental time to ensure both the completion of these mission goals and a safe launch and return of Dragon and the crew the Polaris program said via X on Thursday. As that post indicates, Polaris Dawn will use SpaceX hardware, launching four people to Earth orbit in a crew Dragon capsule atop a Falcon 9 rocket. Those four are Jared Isaacman, the billionaire behind the Polaris program of private space exploration, retired U.S. Air Force Colonel Scott Poteet, and SpaceX employees Sarah Gillis and Anna Menon. Isaacman will command Polaris Dawn, Poteet will serve as pilot, meanwhile Gillis and Menon will be the payload specialist and medical officer, respectively. Polaris Dawn will spend up to five days in Earth orbit, like September 2021's Inspiration4 mission, which Isaacman also commanded and funded, Polaris Dawn will be a free flyer, meaning it'll not meet up with the International Space Station. The coming mission will also raise money for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in Memphis, as Inspiration4 did. The latest delay is not the first for Polaris Dawn. It initially was targeted to launch in late 2022. Polaris Dawn will be the first of three missions in the Polaris program, which Isaacman wants to help push the boundaries of private spaceflight. The billionaire entrepreneur has said that he plans to use SpaceX's next-generation Starship rocket for at least one of the Polaris missions. Starship has conducted two test flights to date in April and November of last year. Currently, SpaceX is gearing up for Starship's third flight, which could lift off as soon as this week. Another significant development in the realm of SpaceX involves the planned removal of approximately 100 older Starlink satellites from orbit due to a design flaw that could compromise their functionality. In a statement on February 12th, SpaceX said it would perform controlled descents of about 100 early version 1 Starlink satellites out of concerns that the spacecraft could fail in orbit and no longer be maneuverable. These satellites are currently maneuverable and serving users effectively, but the Starlink team identified a common issue in this small population of satellites that could increase the probability of failure in the future. SpaceX stated. The company did not elaborate on that issue or identify the specific satellites affected. According to statistics maintained by Jonathan McDowell, SpaceX has 5,438 Starlink satellites in orbit out of 5,828 launched to date. The oldest still in orbit is from an initial group of version 1 satellites launched in 2019 and 2020 that lacked visors added to later satellites intended to reduce the amount of sunlight they reflect reducing their brightness. Of those 420 satellites, 337 remain in orbit. 
SpaceX said the satellites being deorbited will lower their orbits gradually over about six months. All satellites will maintain maneuverability and collision avoidance capabilities during the descent, the company stated. Additionally, these deorbiting satellites will take maneuver responsibility for any high-risk conjunctions consistent with space safety and sustainability best practices. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.